Hello and welcome back to Matplotlib for Python developers. In today's video, the first of the final section, 5, we're going to take a look at some interactive plotting tools. In section 5, we're going to see how to use the IPy widgets module with the Jupyter Notebook to make easy interactive widgets, how to add callbacks to plots to add interactivity to the plots themselves, how to generate GUI neutral widgets for use in different kinds of matplotlib applications, and finally, how to make movies and animations to show off changes in our data. In today's video, we're looking at interactive plots in the Jupyter Notebook. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to install and enable the IPy widgets, how to use the interact method to make basic widgets, how to see the different kinds of widgets that IPy widgets provides, and how to customize these widgets. Let's begin. Now before we get started, we're going to have to actually install IPy widgets. It doesn't come with Jupyter or Matplotlib by default. So we're going to use pip to do this and you simply do a pip install IPy widgets. I want it installed as root, so I'm using sudo here. Now I've already installed this, so I'm not actually going to run it. And after it's been installed, you need to actually enable the extension within the Jupyter Notebook. And to do that, you use this command, Jupyter NB extension enable double dash pi widgets NB extension. That'll enable these widgets to interact with the Jupyter Notebook. Let's dive into our notebook now. Begin as usual by importing and setting up our matplotlib environment. Here we go. And let's also import from IPy widgets the interactive fix and interact manual methods as well as IPy widgets itself as widgets. Let's take a look now to start at a simple function that displays straight line. So f of x displays range of numbers between 0 and 10 with linear function with a slope of x. So an f of 10 here gives you a linear function with a slope of 10. Now we can actually do something pretty cool here in just one line. Using interact and our function and setting x by default some number, let's set it to be 1, we get this little widget popped up automatically for us. And you can see here we have our plot. Now, without having to do any extra code, literally just this one very simple function call, I actually have an interactive plot here. This widget changes the slope of my plot automatically for me. And it knows, based on the fact that this argument is an integer, that I should have a slider here. It automatically picks this slider widget. So I can pick as well what the range of this slider should be. So you can see by default by setting it to a single value, 1, it gives me two integer values below that and two integer values above that. If I want a bigger or perhaps a smaller range, I can pass a minimum. So let's say we only want slopes between minus 1. Let's do minus 3 and plus 3 with a step size of 0.5, so not actually integer size steps, floating point steps. You can see now, since I've centered this at 0, it defaults to 0, and each click on my slider is a 0.5 going between 3 and minus 3. So very easily you can set up sliders that automatically fill their range, and it will choose to use a slider based on type of the argument. So, for example, if I choose a different function here, one that you can see takes boolean as an argument, I can go f x equals true, and you can see it gives me a tick box. And if I hit that tick box, you can see it switches between a blue and a red curve, because it's automatically clearing the figure, calling this function, and applying the argument that the widget is providing to that function. You can also pass interact as a decorator. So for example, I can do interact here, and I can pass a string, let's say title of plot. And you can see since I passed a string, it gives me a text box. And I can actually change the contents of this. 
And you can see it automatically feeds into my plot. Do not need to do anything to hook this in. Just throw this one simple decorator in front of your function. It will automatically choose the appropriate widget and automatically hook that together with your function. You can also choose multiple widgets. So if you have a function that is multiple valued, I can choose, for example, a equals 1, b equals 3, and you can see here I automatically get a pair of widgets, and I can change the index of my power law, and I can also change the slope of my power law. Pretty amazing. Pretty easy, actually, all things considered. I can also fix values. So if I have a 2 argument function, I can say a equals 1 and b equals fixed 2. Now this fix that I imported from IPy widgets is a method that allows you to automatically set the value of one of these arguments. You could use an anonymous function, a lambda, to do this, but the IPy widgets provides an automatic way to do this as well without requiring you to use lambda functions. You can also use drop downs. So for example, I can do an interact of f, and by passing the color equals colors argument, which is a list of strings, I get a drop down menu here. And if I select one of these, you can see I switch between the color of the plot. So it's passing that argument to the C argument of plot. In the case where you want a drop down that doesn't necessarily pass a string, you can also pass a dictionary and get drop down for that as well. So you see here I have a dictionary with strings for keys. And what I'm actually passing here is an integer, the index of my power law, but the drop down displays the English word for that index. So IPy widgets provides a really drop dead simple way of going from zero to interactivity in no time flat. There really isn't an easier way to add interactivity to your matplotlib plots.